Hey guys, so in the last video we talked about five best practices that you should do with the Zabbix items where you can even say like five things to not do just to make sure that your Zabbix server and the whole monitoring system will function properly even when your system grows. So in today's video let's talk about five best practices or five things that you definitely should consider when we're talking about such entities as a triggers inside a Zabbix. So remember the triggers are the one which define when there will be a problem in your instance so if received data will be smaller or bigger than something then you want to see this problem in the front end and number one is basically the same as it was with a Zabbix item so you have a name of the trigger and this name will also be visible when the problem will happen so when the trigger fires you you open your dashboard or monitoring problems page and you see this trigger in a problem state and you must make sure that the name of the trigger actually means something like look at this example so we have a high CPU utilization and then we have over and a user macro which actually will expand to the value that we have stored as a threshold for this trigger for the five minutes so let's say as example we will see high CPU utilization it is over 90% for the last five minutes and it is much better than let's say we would just specify it like this high cpu utilization and then we look on our dashboard look in our monitoring problems page we see that there is a problem with the cpu utilization but we have no idea how high it actually is maybe it's like 20% or 50 or 90 we really don't know and again this threshold might be absolutely different across different servers right for a database it might be one severity for CPU CPU utilization for a simple workstation it could be something absolutely else so be careful when creating names of the triggers make sure to provide as much information as possible number two is choose a proper trigger functions for your triggers so when you're constructing expressions like in this example we can see that we have a minimal used and really think about what sort of values you will be collecting in your item on which you have created this trigger and which trigger function from the supported ones you're going to use will it be the average or minimal or count um, maximal last or whatever else function to determine when it be the when it will be the problem case so let's say if we're talking about again about the cpu utilization example most likely we don't want to use just dot last function which basically will analyze one single value from the item on which we have created the trigger so let's say the cpu load is 50 52 then it shortly spikes for 80 percent we don't want to get a trigger go to the problem at this moment what we want is to really make sure that the problem is happening so let's say not only if the last value spiked to 80 percent but if for a five minutes the minimal value and let's say we're monitoring the cpu load every uh, 30 seconds so in total we will have 10 values and if the minimal value out of these 10 is higher than the threshold that we specified only then we want to be notified about a happening problem and we want to visualize it in the dashboards and in the monitoring problems page however sometimes you want to use some other functions right so think about the data that you're monitoring and make the proper decision to function it just as you want it to do third one how will you calculate when the trigger should recover and go from the problem state back to the okay state so by default okay event generation is based on the expression and this is the expression of the problem right so if the minimal value uh, in five minute period from system cpu utilization item will be higher than we have stored in the user macro then it will be a problem so if this expression is true it's a problem if it's false it's goes back to the okay which is kind of fine but again it might bring some flapping and additional problems in case if our values are flapping so jumping uh, let's say we have a threshold for 50 if it is higher than 50 and we receive a value 55 right it trigger goes to the problem state we receive a notification and then it drops just slightly below so it goes to 49 what happens triggers recovers it switches to the okay state and the next received value is again 51 which is again 
higher than we have specified in the threshold, which will trigger the tr which will trigger the problem problem event, and we will receive a notification about it. So we might end up. Uh, flapping with the values and receiving multiple emails, multiple notifications about identical problems simply because it does not resolve really, right? It is just dropping slightly below our threshold. So instead of using the default expression for OK event generation, we might use a recovery expression. And then we can basically copy paste our problem expression and specify that Yes, it will go to the problem state if the minimal value for five minutes will be higher than CPU utilization critical, but it will recover only if the value will be less uh, CPU utilization, let's say, okay. And then in the user macroses, we can define that the critical value will be 50 and OK will be 20. So if it will go uh, 20, 35, 40, 45, 51, it will be a problem. If it will drop to, let's say, 45, it will still be a problem until it will drop this threshold. Next one, the problem event generation mode. Again, by default, we have a single, but we can always choose a multiple. And if we don't really understand what is this, this setting means, it's easy to make mistakes, right? Because just clicking over a single and multiple doesn't change anything in our screen. So basically how this works, let's say again, in our CPU utilization example, we have a CPU utilization trigger. And if it will go to the problem state, that's it. We have one problem in the dashboard. We have single problem event generation mode. Let's say again, we have a threshold of 50. Uh, we can do it like this. And uh, we receive a value 55. So this triggers go to the problem. The next value is 60, which is still above our threshold, but it will not generate a new problem. So we will still have just one single problem. But if we specify multiple problem event generation mode, then each value received by system CPU utilization item that will be higher than our threshold will create a new problem event. So we might end up having one single item, CPU utilization, one single trigger, but 10, 20, 50 problems on our dashboard simply because we specified that we, uh, for some reason, want to use a multiple problem event generation mode. There are cases when it makes sense, let's say if we're monitoring some log files or SNMP traps without more proper and deeper filtering, but for the sim simple triggers, you definitely want to use the single problem event generation mode. And the last one is very simple. So when you're creating any trigger, doesn't matter Will it be in the host or in the template? There is a small setting, allow manual close. And again, we talked about this in the previous videos on how you can close the problems inside a Zabbix. So if this is enabled, you can close the problem through the acknowledgement when it is actually active. So let's say in the monitoring dashboards again, or in the same monitoring problems page, if there is a problem and you fixed it, but the item has not picked up the data yet, so you want to close it faster, then you just acknowledge and close it right away. If this is unchecked, there won't be any option to close the problem from the visualization options. So better to have this on just in case, even if at the moment when you're creating a trigger, you are not planning to allow manually close this trigger. So that's about it, guys. Those are five simple things that you definitely should keep in mind when you are working with your triggers. Um, again, also check the previous video about the five best practices with the Zabbix items. And uh, thank you for watching. Leave a comment, press the like button, and we'll definitely see you in the upcoming videos. So thank you, guys, and goodbye.